Hallelujah, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please welcome you to our meet um, Daddy Doctor Prophet Kole Hamilton, the president of Shadowville, the shepherd in Shadow Praiseville, a man of outstanding ability and academic. I can go on and on and on, but I don't want to speak on this behalf. Is here life? And uh, you are you are going to you are watching an insightful moment for the first time here. Is our very 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 special guest. Daddy, you are welcome to our Mr. to Celestial Mass TV. Good morning, Daddy. How are you? Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. I'm humbled. To start with, um, Daddy, would people, the world will know about you, but a lot of people would love to know. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you, sir. I am Kunle Hamilton. I trained as a journalist at the University of Lagos. I have about four degrees. I spent about uh, 38 years in journalism practice in Nigeria, and that took me across the West African coast. Uh, I have related very, very well with the press in Liberia, the press in the Gambia, the press in Ghana, and the press in Sierra Leone. I have also had opportunities to practice my profession uh, on a consulting level in the UK the US and the Federal Republic of Germany. I like to describe myself in the area where my passion lies, that I am a prophet, a most superior evangelist in the celestial church, a shepherd, and my first love is teaching people to become the best that God has created them to be. And this, for me, as a Celestian, is what has obliged me to remain the husband of one wife. Thank you very much, Daddy. Um, those who are just joining us, we have Daddy, Dr. Prophet Kony Hamilton here, President of Chadavell, the Shepherd of Prince Bill, uh, just be telling us briefly about himself. You joined me as a, celest as a Celestial and as a Shepherd. I know you've told us a little bit about yourself, but the journey so far, Daddy, as a selection and as a shepherd. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to recall my early days as a prophet in Celestial Church. And I'd like to say that those years for me were very, very exciting. Uh, for someone born into the Methodist Church and raised as a Methodist like uh, our late pastor founder, Papa SBJ Oshofa. When I look back and I compare the two Christian backgrounds, I realized that it is indeed true. I want your fellow unpe, I want to fellow your, because I have found a more profound, uh, practical Christianity in Celestial Church than what I experienced in my younger days in the other denomination. Uh, rising through the ranks, because I joined Celestial Church in a very, very small parish in Ikwari Surulere, in the heart of Lagos, I was able to rise quickly as a service conductor, a Bible reader, uh, an announcer. I was one of the earliest interpreters of sermons in my parish. And what gave me the, the greatest joy when I look back at those years was that like many people, and I hope people will share from my experience here, like many people in Celestial Church, you will come across things that will make you ask yourself, are you in the right place? What are you doing amongst these people that surround you here? Especially someone like me who joined the church as a university graduate. I was not born into the Celestial Church. I did not have any problems. There was nothing that pushed me to Celestial Church, but the curiosity of an educated person. Now, what kind of church is this where uh, their prophetic releases are so spot on, so exact, you know? Mm -hmm. I had my fair share of questioning my membership of Celestial Church. And I wanted to leave the Celestial Church three times in my mm -hmm. life. Three times I was greatly challenged. And three times the Lord said to me, Go back to your place of assignment. 
after this third time, I'm not going to send you a warning anymore. I'm going to start punishing you. So people should learn from me that you need to be obedient to God. They should learn from me that you need to discover where God really wants you. Not where you want, but where God really wants you. And I'm glad that I found my place of assignment, even though I didn't like it at first. Let me quickly round off this part and move on to the part of my experience as a shepherd. I, I discovered that perhaps the main reason God was so very, very angry with me the third time and said, look, from this point on, I'm going to start punishing you, Kunle. Go back to your place of assignment. Was because in that my small parish, people didn't want to go to school. Hmm. And here was a young 20-something-year-old guy who was all over the parish, reading Bible, conducting. I was in the choir. Uh, I was a prophet. I was interpreting sermons. I didn't know that young people were going back to their parents, the much younger ones, to say, Ah, mommy, I love Uncle Kunle. I want to speak English like Uncle Kunle. And then the mothers will say to them, If you love him and want to be like him, then you have to go to school like him. I didn't realize all of this then. You know, sometimes you will not understand why God says do this or do that. Until about 10 years later, when these same children who their parents were beating to go to school started going to school because they wanted to be like Kunle Hamilton. And then they had started graduating. And then they were sharing with me, Uncle Kunle, do you know that it's because I want to be like you that I went to school and I'm glad I'm a graduate today. Now that parish where I joined Celestial Church has produced so many graduates, but three of them have, they, they graduated with a first class in their yeah. courses of study. So I tell people that our being members of Celestial Church is not limited to the spiritual works we can do amongst ourselves that we rely on shepherds and prophets to do for us because we are spiritual beings ourselves and if we are obedient to God, he can make each and every one of us that spiritual inspiration for others to follow. Um, Hill Ministries, Terraville is a non-denominational ministry. Although we have affected the lives of about 70% of 18 years. CCC Praiseville is a celestial Church of Christ ministry, not a full-blown parish. And what we do in CCC Praiseville has been in the last four to five years. We started in Berlin. Uh, Germany, and I'm happy to note that God sent us an angel in human skin mm. who lives in, our, in Austria, and I saw him join this Zoom link as we started, but I won't mention his name. He supported that dream. We were able to plant a celestial church in Bar Berlin, a full-blown parish, and the good news about that one was that from the very first service that we held in Berlin, all our members who joined on that same day, about 52 of them, they were one Celestians who had gone to Pentecostal churches because there was no Celestial church. They were happy to come back into Celestial church and left their Pentecostal uh, churches. Hmm. Now, you know, it's always the other way around. Right, yes. Church. Uh -huh. People leave Celestial Church for Pentecostal churches. So I had the joy, the testimony of all my members in Berlin leaving Pentecostal churches to come and join Celestial Church. Oh, and yeah. about 18 months after that uh, planting in Berlin, the Lord said to me to start a praiseful parish in Nigeria. Hmm. 
But um, I negotiated with my maker, the one who has sent me. This is something else I think everybody should understand. We can negotiate with God sometimes. We saw instances of that in the Bible. This was a man after the heart of God who said to God, if you find 10 people, will you withhold your hand in destroying the city? And the Lord said, yes. How about if you find five people? The Lord said, yes. How about if you found only one person? The Lord still said, yes. That was negotiation. So I negotiated with God that there's a minimum standard of a model praiseful parish I would like to see planted in Nigeria. And since the resources were not immediately available, as at the time God said, go and start it, that God should please permit me to start a CCC Praiseville ministry that everybody will be in Sutana except those who are just joining us. And the good news is that the ministry in Nigeria is just three years plus in age. And we have had over 10 Muslim families who joined Celestial Church in Praiseville. We have had over five Pentecostal families who joined Celestial Church in Praiseville. Just before the pandemic, as a shepherd, I was particularly excited that God would allow me to take about 44 people to Emeka for the convocation oh, and yeah. a spiritual retreat. And of the 44 of them, about 24 of those 44 were new joiners of Celestial Church who had never been to Emeka. That's been my experience as a shepherd. No, yeah, God bless you, Daddy. God bless you. For those who are just joining us, uh, we have a great man of God, our Father, the Lord, Dr. Kule Hamilton, the president of Shadowville, um, the shepherd of Praiseville, a great man of God. On the, this is our first program of Insightful Moments on Celestia on us TV. He's just been explaining to us about his background, his life. Because I wanted to ask him about Praiseville, actually, but he said it all about Praiseville. Uh, please, I will give our audience uh, about five minutes or ten minutes time to ask a question to interact with him. I'd love to know the inspiration behind the morning showers. Thank you. Thank you so very much. I, I recall that uh, the Holy Spirit spoke to me about September when that particular year when the Lord said, go and start Praiseville, Nigeria. So the first thing I did was immediate obedience that before we would meet physically everybody who has been interested in what we were doing in Shadaiville and who are Celestians I quickly created a WhatsApp group and I started in them to it and as they got added they saw that the name of the group was CCC Praiseville and they were excited because these were people who had been with me in Shadaiville who had been saying, let us turn Shadaiville into a celestial church. And I said, no, God did not tell me to turn Shadaiville into a celestial church. When that time comes, you will all see. So for three months, I started meditating. What will God have me do with CCC Praiseville? Uh, please bear in mind that when God asks you to start something, he does not give you a complete picture immediately. So I started asking God, how should we start? And then I had a leader that, look, you are a ministry. Celestial Church is used to the parish system. So whatever you do in the ministry, do not conflict with the laid down procedures of service in Celestial Church. So I knew straight away that CCC Praiseville could not hold a 10 o'clock meeting on a Sunday because that would mean clashing with parish time. So the next challenge was <laughs> if Celestians go late to church that's supposed to start at 10 a.m., some get there 11, some to 12, <laughs> will Celestians be willing to convert earlier than 10 o'clock. So I said to God, if this is what you really want me to do, 
and you're saying I should not conflict with laid down times in Celestial Church, then you just have to prove to me from the first meeting, make it succeed. That was when I heard clearly in the spirit, yes, Kunle, I taught you branding. So brand what you want to do. The Lord left that with me. And you see, the first lyrics of a song that came to my mind was not even a celestial song. But I think it's a song you will know. I heard in the spirit, there shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of God. As soon as I caught on to that, mm. the showers there, I just said, ah, this one's a celestial shower. Wow. In the spirit, as I said, this must be celestial showers. I just heard the lyrics of him 239. Oh, Joe, and me, So, see how God connected the non celestial with the celestial. Now, I had a name. I called my graphics sons and said, Please put something together. Look for a logo for Celestial Church. The name of the program shall be Celestial Showers. The name of the ministry shall be CCC Praiseville, a sister movement linked to CCC Praiseville in Berlin. And that's how we got started. And you know, ever since then, what God has been doing at the Celestial Showers is actually rain blessings upon us. As in what you will feel when you are under the rain. Oh, yeah. So we started with uh, Celestial Showers one Sunday per month. We did that for 12 months. And towards the close of the first year, the Lord said, you will take that same thing you've been doing under your roof to the National Stadium as an annual program. So that one was named Celestial Showers Convention. And the very first one, I mean, the auditorium we use can, at the most, not in this times of pandemic though, can at the most take 180 people. But when we went to the stadium, in obedience to what God said, we had over 3,500 people at that convention. And by the third year, which was February this year, the convention could no longer go to the national stadium because of the pandemic and COVID restrictions. But God blew me away. Despite the restrictions, the space we have that can take 180, we had to make do with 90 people because government said only 50% occupation of the space yes. you have for service. Do you know, Superior Ebenezer, yes, sir. that in February this year, you know, you can lie, you can lie about a lot of things, but you cannot lie about what the digital media has in his library. Hmm. The convention, which was a hybrid ceremony, had 90 people in the auditorium, and we had 25,000 people who participated wow. online. Wow. So that has been the story of the Celestial Showers. Those of you are just joining us, um, our daddy has been just giving us insight about his life journey and um, we have Dr. Prophet Holy meeting the well-known all over the world and uh, we're learning from it. Uh, very, very soon I'm going to bring other people in to ask him questions but before then I will is I'd love to know daddy about Shaddai Pio. About 28 years ago or maybe 25 years ago the lord visited me and gave me two names he gave me the name shadaiville and then gave me the name praise parish so the praise view we have today was originally given to me as praise parish now i immediately knew when god said to me in the spirit you're going to found 
praise parish that that was a celestial outlet for god but i did not know what Shadaido stood for i wrote the names down someplace and i kept on honestly it was not a very good day for me because i was saying to myself of all people god why would you want me to be a parish shepherd in celestial no 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 god don't do this to me so i was not very happy then years later about 18 and a half years ago on a saturday i got home i was chairman of my parish in a quarry at the time where i joined celestial church i had gone there for a meeting on saturday then i got back home and i met four young people i didn't know immediately that they were celestians they were aged between 16 and 17. one one female and three boys they were friends of my first daughter they were all going to christ castle parish in sabo i said daddy we've been waiting for you i said what for he said we have they have a spokesman his name is um Ayomi Kwasi Adeshokon. They said to me, we have questions that bother us. We have asked our elders, even our shepherd, and we do not have satisfactory answers. With even our own parents, they didn't give us satisfactory answers. We just want to let you know that if you two cannot give us satisfactory answers, by the time each one of us turns 18, and the constitution of nigeria allows us to take decisions as adults we all want to leave celestial church i hope that people who say a lot of things they don't understand about what i'm doing in celestial church will listen to this chadaibu was founded by the inspiration of how do we keep in the celestial church four young people who say once we are 18 we are going to leave I said, so what are the questions? Can you follow me into my private office? I opened the door of my office. Instead of going into my home, it was my office I opened, and I gave them a Bible each. We spent two hours together that Saturday. By the special grace of God, not because I am the best Bible scholar. No way. I was able to find a biblical answer to every question the four of them asked. They were so excited. They were saying things like, so you mean the answers we've been seeking are actually in the Bible? Oh my oh, God. Yeah. Then they said, Daddy, Daddy, please don't go anywhere next Saturday. We are more than four. I said, come. The next Saturday, there were eight of them. We spent another two hours. Then when the eight of them were leaving, they said, Daddy, please, Next Saturday, they don't go anywhere. I said, no, 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 no. I need my life. My name, check again, is Hamilton, not Oshofa. So if you want to leave Celestial Church, you can leave. <laughs> but me, I want my life back. So I saw how downcast they were. So I quickly repented of what I said. And I said to them, you know what, guys? The word of God is really not something you can benefit from in an argumentative mindset. Let me suggest to you, there is a dying tradition in Celestial Church. You say, what tradition is that? That what God gave Papa Oshofa was that we will hold a service Sunday morning and we'll hold a service Sunday evening. But because a lot of people do not even leave the church until evening, they can't come back for an evening service. So the evening service tradition is dying in the church. So if you go to church, demonstrate to me that you really love God, which is what brought you here. Go to your church on Sunday. Come to me and we will do this, but in a different setting. They say, what kind of setting when you come? All of these things, I wasn't thinking about it. When they came two Sundays afterwards, the eight of them 
I think they had become nine. My young children and my wife making, I have three children. At that time, I had two. The last born had not, had not come. Oh, no, no, she had come too. I had three children, plus myself and my wife, five, plus them, nine. So 14 of us. We moved chairs around in the living room and we had the first Shadaiville Fellowship. Five years after, at two Sundays per month, the Holy Spirit came to me and said, Kule, well done. You've been doing so well. We're mm. taking Shadaiville to the next level. You're going to start leadership training. Now, Allah by Beniza, huh? you will not believe what I said, what I said in response to the Holy Spirit. I said, me, leadership training, me, Celestia, leadership training. <laughs> God, don't forget to, I am Kule Hamilton. I am not Max, uh, I am not Maxwell, John Maxwell, and I am not, what's the name of this wonderful, Dr. Miles Munro. I said, I'm not yeah. Max, Maxwell, I'm not Miles Munro. What do I know about leadership? Then the Lord cajoled me and said, no, 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 don't worry. I will teach you exactly the leadership principles I want you to teach the young people I've been bringing to you. Which one is God saying? Then the Lord threw me the joker and God said, this I promise you, everyone that comes under your tutelage, no matter the desires they've been denied, no matter the problems they are going through in their personal lives, just for coming to learn the principles I'm going to teach you myself, every one of them will have a testimony. I quickly jumped at that. I said, God, this means you want to make me a miracle worker. And that is what has de defined my own understanding of miracle. For me, miracle is not that the blind have seen, the deaf have heard. For me, a genuine miracle is that a life has been changed. A sinner has been won. So that's what we've been doing the last 13, 14 years out of our 18 years in Shadaiville. That's how we started. And the joker, Allah by Beniza, is that we have done this in Nigeria for about 14 years. We have done it in America. We've done it in the UK. We've done it in Germany because Shadaiville is registered in those four countries uh, continents of the world and we do our leadership training free of charge till today do yeah for those who have just joined us god bless you this is insightful moments on celestia honors tv if you are online watching if you want to interact with daddy Kule hamilton this is your time please uh, please i have a question for uh daddy Kule hamilton I need uh, a deeper uh, revelation, what the Lord has revealed to you about this name and this name is to fulfill and uh, what we are to get from this name because I think we are also joined to this name since the Lord has given a name, Shaddai, and I want to know the covenant that we are to benefit, to connect to in that name, Shaddai. Shaddai is God, Veal is city. Shadaiville means God's city. And members of Shadaiville are called villas. You know, the Bible says that we are the temple of God. So every villa carries God in himself. And that's why he's called a villa. Now, the same goes for Praiseville. Praise is, of course, extolling the glory of God. And Praiseville means the city of praise. The aspiration for every villa, every member of Shadaiville or Praiseville is to see yourself in the connection with the rest of humanity, the rest of nature, because God has not created anyone to be an island. So when you think not just for yourself, but for a whole city, a whole community of believers, then that would oblige you not to be selfish. So that's the aspiration that we are uh, raising Christians who will think beyond themselves and share the love of Christ. 
with many others. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. God bless you, sir. Thank you for that brilliant question. Daddy, thank you. We have two more people that just raised their hands now. Um, sister Lola, how about you? Good morning. Good, oh, good morning, afternoon. Sir. Hallelujah, Daddy. How are you? Daddy. God bless you. Good morning. Hallelujah. We've got uh, a passion for youth, so that's why I can relate to a lot of things you said in, the, in that level. And before you came on, Daddy also said something about prophetic ministry, in that a lot of prophets give messages that are not really true, and that. And I just want to ask my. I've got two questions. My first question, really, before I talked about the youth, my question mainly is, when in Shadavi in Anvil and all the ministries you're doing, do we teach or touch on fruit of the spirit and gift of the spirit? Because I think in Celestial, we tend to deviate. I mean, I like how you started that you're a Christian man with one wife. But having said that, the fruit of the Spirit is what you're understanding by. You must show that I know God and I've got the fruits to show for this. You do not, you have to follow that in which the Holy Spirit has taught or what the scriptures has taught us, if you understand what I'm saying. So how are we doing this in Shadowville or in Celestial Showers, as we say? Thank you very much. Um, there's a reason that the Lord gave us the fivefold ministries as pillars for every church. And in Praiseville, despite the many oddities that we see on the landscape of the prophetic office in Celestial Church, we give latitude to spiritual prophecies in Praiseville. But the thing about Praiseville, which I think the Celestial Church is yet to formalize. Uh, when I study the history of our great church in the Blue Book, our constitution, I got into the mind of our founder, late pastor SBG Oshoff, and I realized that what the Pentecostal churches today have formalized as entry point for all their new members. They, they suck them in into a believer's class where mm -hmm. there is sound tutelage. Celestial Church was given the same thing, but somehow we missed it. We didn't pay attention to it, or perhaps because the way Celestial Church put it, it was clearly the remit of the shepherd and the shepherd alone. Whereas in the Pentecostal churches, they have set up a team under the pastor. So the team always ensures that seamlessly as new members come in, they, they go through the believers class. And I'll give you an example. What I'm talking about is when you enter Celestial Church, you, you go through the ceremonial bath, which is supposed to usher you into a period of training where you get to know the do's and don'ts of the church and begin to adapt yourself to this new Christian lifestyle. But what we have done is we have relegated this to just an announcement on the announcement rostrum. So whether people understand this thing, their lives are adapting to it or not, we don't follow up. Every tenet in Celestial Church has a biblical anchor or even sometimes several texts in the Bible. But when you only hear it on the podium, you don't go and find out what the Bible says about it. And until you hear the word of God, not the announcement on the podium, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. Until you find the root in the Bible, nothing changes about you. So I would say that the advantage we have in Praiseville is that once you enter as a new Celestian or an old Celestian who is just joining us because you like what we do. I give you a couple of weeks and then I approach you. Our ushers will approach you. 
members of our pastorate will approach you and they begin to encourage you to go through the leadership training. So about 90% of our members in Praiseville have been through the leadership training. And that's how they imbibe the fruits of the spirit, regardless of whether or not they are already operating in the gifts of the spirit. Of course, the gifts of the spirit you will find in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and the fruits of the Holy Spirit you will find in Galatians chapter 5. So I want to encourage all shepherds who are forward-looking, like Supreme Evangelist Ebenezer, I want to encourage all shepherds in Celestial Church, let's go back to this thing that Papa gave us, that the Holy Spirit gave us through Papa. Let us formalize it. Let us turn it into a believer's class. So that people will not become full-fledged Celestians just by their baptism or their anointment, but they will be full-fledged Celestians in their different parishes because they have graduated from the believers' class of the parish. Ayo DG Olariwaju raised his hand. Are you there, Ayo? This is uh, yes, Ayo. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Ayo. Um, God bless the ministry, sir. <laughs> Amen, and you too. Yes, I, I just want to ask a question as as regards the call of a shepherd in CCC worldwide. You understand? Because one, one thing I got to understand is that um, once God called you as a shepherd, you know, especially in Nigeria, I just want to ask, firstly, that, like there are two questions I want to ask. Number one, uh, is it is it a thing, is it a norm as a shepherd in CCC? Because we have so many shepherds who are not working in Nigeria in Nigeria particularly, like they would say, okay, God called them and they have to drop, you know, their their job to start um, uh, the call, you understand? So I, firstly, I want to ask, is it is it a norm? Like, is it, how true is it that in CCC, if you are being called by God, you have to drop your work. You don't have to, some even go, uh, to the extent of saying they shouldn't invest into uh, businesses or um, uh, let me say worldly things. How, how true is that, sir? It is very true, but I personally cannot run my life like that. <laughs> it is true to the extent, yes, and I like to break it down because you see, we are in a church where our people are extremely fastidious about everything our the founder of the church has said and people do not understand that even though there is a video clip where papa said specifically that once you elect to join the clergy in celestial church you cannot have any secular engagement yeah. from there on so to that extent it is okay i'll talk to you later now now for those who might have been looking at this issue this is my position and my position is not for everyone else let me answer to my maker my position is this everything written in the bible is in context therefore even though papa has a video that has gone viral saying that clergymen in the celestial church must not have any secular engagement i believe even that was in context what papa said back then cannot hold for all shepherds in celestial church and it cannot hold for all time. For example, after God, it is the government of every country that is the next in power. So what if a country comes today, not necessarily Nigeria, because there are Christians everywhere. A country comes today and says, whether you are pastor or imam or the chief priest of any religion, we will cancel your church and your movement 
if you do not pay tax. Such people will then find out that their meager or modest income from church cannot sustain them. And Jesus said, give unto Caesar what is Caesar's. It only makes natural sense that to survive, such people will have to work. Now in Nigeria, most parishes of the celestial church are built, not rented. In fact, I'm sure 99% of parishes in celestial church are built, not rented. Whereas in America, in Europe, in the UK, I've not been to Asia, but I sense it's going to be like that too. Most houses of God have to be rented. When you move from the level of short lease or less to a long lease, then you forever pay a mortgage. So at the end of the day, what you say is yours is still rented. Now, I have a lot of friends in the UK, in America, who struggle to pay the rent of their parishes. Some of them pay as much as £2,000 per month, depending on the space they have and where it's located in the country where they operate. Now, celestial church <laughs> is mostly the same everywhere in the world. Go to the best cathedrals in Nigeria, and what you will find is that the true donors, the true sowers, financial seed sowers in parishes are very few. You can count them on one, one hand, the fingers of one hand. Go to their offering tray. You will still find 20 naira, 50 naira, 100 naira, 200 naira. In Europe, you will still find Instead, because there is no one, <laughs> no one euro that is paper money. It's only the one dollar that's paper money. And one dollar has a lower value than one coin or one euro. I've seen the mentality of Celestians. They will be giving one dollar in a church service in UK where the... Uh, authorized currency is pound they will be given offering of one dollar in you in europe where the authorized currency is euro so at the end of the day no parish in europe the uk or even in the us pays their rent from the offering collected in the services for a whole month that is still the church struggling to survive on rent so if the shepherd in america in uk in europe is waiting for offering himself his wife his children will be in penury yes definitely so what what papa has said cannot work for all shepherds across the world not only that i did let us now analyze that's why i said papa said what he said but he said it in context in the redeemed christian church of god for instance there are pastors who still keep their regular jobs one shining example is the vice president of nigeria who is still the pastor of a redeemed christian church of god parish in banana island you cannot pastor a church in Banana Island and compare yourself with somebody who pastors a church in Moshi. The land is not sold at the same rate. You can't build at the same rate. The mortgage is not the same. Now, there are other pastors in the regime whose responsibilities, perhaps as state pastors, or regional pastors, 
does not leave them enough time. If they must deliver on those responsibilities, it does not give them enough time to do any secular business or report in any office. At that level, yes, I believe a clergyman who's a regional pastor, a regional shepherd, or a state evangelist will have to do 100% Levitical order. Now, most of our parishes, especially in Nigeria, and more so abroad, we have small mushroom parishes all over the country in Nigeria, where shepherds have a congregation of less than 50. On the average congregations in the average size of parishes in Nigeria fluctuates between 100 and 200. Very few cathedrals are in the bracket of over 500 to 2,000. In fact, from my research, there is only one parish in Nigeria that can boast of a regular congregation any given Sunday without a harvest or special location of over 2,000 members. Now, if as a shepherd, you used to work as a professor in the university or a manager in a bank or a certified engineer, the level or a human resources manager, the level at which your brain engages as a human resources manager, maybe you're controlling 500 staff of the company you work for in different states in Nigeria. You now become a shepherd in Celestial Church. There's no automatic congregation. You have to grow them. You've been at it for five years. Your congregation is still less than 40. When you are in productive employment, you are responsible for over 500 people. And now you're coming to a church where they say, uh, because you have become clergy, and it does not matter that your congregation is not 35 or 38 persons, you must stop secular engagement. That, that, the, the, the church can really not grow. And that's one of the problems of Nigeria. Uh, sorry, of problems of Celestial Church. Now, imagine a shepherd who is paying 1,200 euros per month in a rented house of the Lord, and his congregation is less than 30. He has to be gainfully employed for him to even survive enough to remain shepherd of the parish he wants to grow. My, my third level of analysis, and this is something I will engage the pastorate of Celestial Church at any level with, so that they can go back and realize that what Papa said was in context. And today's context does not permit it for everybody. If the goal of being a Levite in Celestial Church as a shepherd is so that, because it has nothing to do with the Holy Spirit, it is just so that you can concentrate fully on the Lord's commandment in your land, uh, the Lord's commission in your hands. So, <clears throat> You don't want to do business outside of church. What do shepherds currently do in Celestial Church today? Are we not the same persons selling candles, selling sponge, selling soap, selling perfumes through our wives? Is that not business? Is there anything holy about that? It's simply demand and supply. Simply market forces. So if the church can accommodate a secular transaction on a daily basis in the church, in what context is Papa then saying that a clergyman cannot, must discontinue secular engagement? My position is that when shepherds get to the level of nurturing a 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 strong parish or controlling multiple parishes, 10, 20 in their region or 50 parishes in their state. 
then yes, such shepherds should no longer engage, even if they must deliver well on their responsibility. And the celestial church must be ready then to foot the bills of what makes them responsible human beings. Their children must go to school. The church must pay those school fees. They need to have a car. The church must pay that. Their regular salary, because what you spend maintaining a car is not what you spend when you don't have a car. Those are the things to consider your age. And I'm hope that those who are in a position to, to redress this area in our, in our celestial Church of Christ setting will listen to this and do the needful. Let me close on this issue by saying to you that the bane of all the negative reports that we hear all over our beautiful church about prophets and shepherds that have criminal tendencies, that are fraudulent, that are engaged in deceiving their members and collecting money from them in the name of the Holy Spirit. They are pushed to do that because the church says in being shepherds, they cannot earn money. So we are left with a church that attracts the worst in the market. Those who have failed in, the, in their secular lives are the ones who are shepherds in celestial church just because of that policy. I rest for now. Are you there? Sister I am. Amaya. Hallelujah, sirs and mas. Thanks. Hallelujah. For, I want to say thank you very much. Daddy, is it okay for me to say DKH as well? I love the acronym. <laughs> it's okay. It's All okay. All right. Thank you, sir. God bless you, doctor. I I know you, I mentioned that it actually answered a bit of what I was going to ask. But then on second thought, I realized I could then, you know, enlarge it. Or you could enlarge it a bit. In that I said, the youth you mentioned, I've got a passion for them. And it's so great the way you nailed it. I st When I started coming to Celestial Church, we used to do 6, 6 p.m. service, which we don't do. We, I, no church, actually, in England. I know do it at the moment. But then again, it's because of time. Everyone has to go to work and family life and all of this. But then how, again, do we mix the 10 a.m. service with the 6 p.m. service from your blueprints? So that's one question. Maybe there's an advice on that. That's one. The second one is the youth. I came to you. How again do you start the beginners class? I know we know we do Jason Peo Toto Elishewa. Then how do you elaborate on that and make it bigger and get people to be disciples and not just converts? Because mostly converts, once they get solution in celestial church, then that's it. They join and they become radicals or rebels and then they go away. These are the main people I find that scatter the church at the end of the day. Thank you very much. Um, first, concerning the timelines in Celestial Church. Um, we start, we have a start time and a close time in Sisi Praiseville, Nigeria. We start at 7 a.m., we close at 9 a.m. And if we close five minutes past nine, we apologize to our congregation and said, don't worry, we'll do better next time. We close at nine o'clock. So everybody knows us for that. We've maintained it for over three years now. Now, I have given advice to some shepherds in Celestial Church. There's a parish, a cathedral in Ibadan. Um, when the Lord sent me there, um, I noticed that the cathedral, a big cathedral, it has a hospital, it has a guest house, it has uh, a, an air-conditioned Sunday school, it has a magnificent marbled-up cathedral, really big, aside from the vicarage, mm, etc. I mean, it's, it's what I would love every celestial parish to grow into if they have land. But when I got there about 14 years ago, as a missionary, I noticed that they would have spiritual work all scattered in front of the Sunday podium, 
the pulpit. Mm. Then I noticed that the average time they closed in service was about 3.30. So I called the leadership of the parish after a while and I said to them, do you know that your congregation will increase automatically within three months if you start closing at 1.30 max? That will be three and a half hours of church service. I said, we lie to each other when we say it is the Holy Spirit that keeps us in church. <laughs> because the, whole, the Bible shows us that the Holy Spirit, there is, there is no force in the world as committed to timeliness as the Holy Spirit. We individuals, we human beings are the ones who cannot keep to time, not the Holy Spirit. I said, okay. number two, do you know that the word from the pulpit will have more impact? If you do not campaign and advertise all these spiritual works in front of the pulpit. The reason, there's a reason Jesus Christ never did spiritual works in front of a congregation he's preaching to. Because the spiritual work has the power to overshadow the greatest rema released from the Holy Scriptures. So evangelists who hold seven candles in their hands when they are preaching, they have wasted their time on the pulpit. Because everybody looking at them is believing as they believe in the candles in their hands rather than the words they are speaking. Mm. This parish listened to me. They made a policy. I said, try... Which I was, and they started closing between one and one thirty, without doing anything extra. Their congregation almost doubled in three months. Celestians are tired of the lie we tell them. The Holy Spirit is not the one wasting our time in church. Secondly. Some people may have need because they have idle time on their hands or because they're in the face of their life, they need to spend more time waiting upon the Lord. Such people may have the need to attend Sunday service in the morning and in the evening. It is not compulsory for everybody. The evening service should target Celestians who have to work in the morning, but who should be in church. So let them go to work in the morning and encourage them to come for evening service. service. And make sure oh. evening service is definitely shorter than morning service. And the evening service will target, you see, the problem with us as a church is that we are not strategic. And the Lord we serve is very strategic. Is it not the same God who said, be clever like the serpent? And gentle as a dove. And gentle as a dove. That is strategy. Let the evening service target celestials who are needful, celestials who work in the morning hours, and let the morning service close on time so that even those who are in need in the face of their life to be in church, it will be like, by the time you, you do morning service on Sunday and evening service on Sunday for a whole month, you're going to feel like you have gone to do protection in church. You're going to feel so wholesome. You're going to feel spiritually recharged. But when you're targeting the same congregants, morning and evening, they're going to ask you if they're the ones that killed Jesus. <laughs> Now to your question about how to formalize training for new believers in Celestial Church. Well, you are being kind by saying that people should not just be converts. They should be much more than that. In actual fact, a lot of us in Celestial Church are only raising customers. We are not even raising converts. A true convert is somebody who has walked away from his or her past. 
and has no intention of going back to Egypt. But it does not happen automatically. It comes from nurturing that person from the milk of the gospel to the meat of the gospel. So what I will encourage is that in Crown of Glory Parish, for example, because this is something else I have found out in Celestia Church, which is very good for us. Oh, Celestians can photocopy anything. That's a good program today that nobody else is doing. In less than three weeks, they will copy what you are doing and they will go and try and establish a parody of it. That is a, a fake a fake version of it in their own place. No, Nobody stays long enough to learn. Nobody stays long enough to God to talk to him. So what I will encourage is that in Crown of Glory, for instance, and in Vienna 1, because I have uh, that the author is equal here, the curriculum for a whole year of Bible class can be distilled into eight weeks of teaching. Find the basic concepts like baptism, like getting born again, like giving one's life, like learning how to read the Bible, the steps to follow. Basic things like that constitute what Pentecostal churches teach in their believers' class. Concept of life after death. The concept of sin and overcoming sin. Those are the basic things that need to constitute the literature, the curriculum for a believer's class. And for us in Celestial Church, we add to that curriculum the reasons for our do's and don'ts as the Bible corroborates it. So in eight weeks, everyone who comes freshly into a parish has graduated beyond being pushed around by anyone. They can defend what they believe in and you can monitor them. So in, in Shadaiville, Shadaiville is the human capacity building arm of CCC Praiseville, even though Shadaiville is older than Praiseville in my commission. So once you come into Shadaiville, there is the six-week discipleship program, basic discipleship. Then there is the eight-week leadership training. Our leadership training that is now eight weeks used to be one year. But practice makes perfect. Mm -hmm. We have distilled our 12 modules to the level that we can teach them in eight weeks and be sure of the substance of the people who will graduate. Thank you very much, Lola, for asking those questions. Thank you very much. Thank sir. you very much. Oh, Thank you very much. Um, unfortunately, that's the last question from our viewers. Uh, to those who are just joining us or you're watching live, uh, this is Insightful Moments on Celestia Honors TV. That has been very, very good in explaining through this to us. And then, um, as usual, on end of our programs, on Celestia Honors TV, we're going to edit it. Like I said to you, if you want a copy of it, you can ask me, I'll send it to you, or you can watch it on our YouTube channel, which is better. Uh, but do not alter any of our programs by putting your own logo on it. We don't allow that. We stay on our own lane, we do our own thing. Don't do another thing. Please, you're allowed to use it to share it to your platform, to send it to your friends, but don't, don't put your logo or anything on it. God will bless you. And Daddy, finally, I'm grateful from the depth of my heart to be honest with you. I'm the happiest shepherd alive today, watching this live and hosting this has been a very great privilege for me. And God bless you, Daddy. Uh, Daddy, um, I just want to ask you the final, what advice, briefly, will you give to CCC shepherds? Thank you very much. Uh, the world is watching us, CCC shepherds. The world is watching us. We are the pillars upon which God has built this legacy that he founded by the hand of our late progenitor, Papa S.B.J. Osho. My, I admonish us all as shepherds, anywhere we find ourselves in the world, to be shining examples. The fact that you're a shepherd 
does not remove the fact that you are most likely also a husband and a father. Whatever you do as a shepherd will influence your wife and your children. Today, shepherds whose children do not worship in celestial church, it's not only because those children maybe were married off into another denomination. Many times it's also because what they see their shepherd fathers do puts them off. When a shepherd mis mistreats his wife, the children want to, they don't want to remain a part of that church because it means then the church is a lie. A church that does not promote marital values, parental values, cannot hold or sustain the Christianity of children who are able to read for themselves. This legacy has lived on because of the commitment and the dedication of truly called shepherds. out the shepherds who have criminal intentions to hold sway celestial church would have become history but we thank god for well-intentioned genuine-minded truly called shepherds upon whose commission god has sustained this church i call on all shepherds Stop thinking of yourself and yourself alone. See yourself as a city set upon a hill that everybody is looking at. If Papa did all those miracles in his time, then I want you to know that in your own little way, you too can do something similar, if not even a lot more than Papa did. After all, Jesus said, the things you see me do, you can do likewise, and you can do even more. May God bless all your commissions, dear shepherds, in Jesus' name. Amen. Finally, uh, there's a message from Temitokwe uh, Olabide. says, thank you, Daddy, for joining to this session. Temitokwe sends his greetings. Thank you, Temitokwe. Yes. He's, he's a guy. He's a guy. He's one okay, of thank my... you, Mr. Temitokwe. Sorry. Okay, he said, thank you, Daddy, for joining Mr. Timitope. God bless you. We appreciate you on Celestia on TV. God bless you. Daddy, finally, um, it's supposed to be an hour program. Thanks for your endurance. Daddy, um, Daddy, is it, Daddy, where are you? Daddy, also, you're going to pray for us before you go. Please don't go, because this is a very special program. Uh, Daddy, also, will pray for us. Daddy, I just want to, just one word for this, your boy. Because I know you encourage me privately. I know you won't say much online, but some things happened recently that I'm talking to you and you've been very good to me. Uh, sometimes I, you said something earlier. There are times that I wanted to quit, to be honest with you, because I just want to earn my living, come home and not do anything. But I love working for God. I love CCC. I wake up in the morning, this church is my life. Doing things in the CCC, I love it. And the uh, Celestia Honors and Merit Award International, which you have been very supportive, will also be very good at that. So, just, one word for us and for myself. Thank you very much. Um, my brother, you know that the word testimony, as long as it is, starts with four letters, test. Count it all job when people test your patience, when they talk behind your back and you hear it, when they put blockades before you rather than help you to scale over them. They present the tests that will lead to your testimonies in the name of Jesus. The word of God says, we must never look back. Those of us who set our hands to the plow. Not everybody will understand the vision of the commission of God in your life. So they are likely to abuse it they are likely to become uh, anesthetic to it rather than that is initially 
But when you stay the course, those who are not early joiners can become latter joiners. The truth is, all things shall continue to work for the good for which God has commissioned you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you very much, Daddy. Daddy, also, uh, we're running up the programs on behalf of Celestia Honors and Merita World and Celestia Honors TV. Daddy, Ole, we love you. I appreciate you. We appreciate you. Thank you ever so much. And I know we're going to come back to this program. We have a lot we do together. We have a lot we do together. And then, uh, my greetings to Mommy and to all members of Shadowville, Praiseville. I always and follow Praiseville. Praise anyway, I love it. And um, all yeah. Celestia and all the world has come to join us. Please let us continue to celebrate this great man of God. The Lord will give you long life in Jesus' mighty name. Daddy Otto, uh, pray, pray for us to run on the program. Glory be to the Father, glory be to the Son, glory be to the Holy Spirit. As it, As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Jehovah. Holy. Jesus Christ. Holy. Holy Michael. Holy. Heavenly Father, we bless you. We thank you for the grace of this day. Thank we you, thank you, Almighty Father, for the words we had. We thank you, Father, for our Father, whom we have used to disseminate all these words of encouragement. We thank you, Almighty Father, Lord God, for what you are doing in Celestia, oh Lord God. It's not by our power or by our might, it's all because of your grace and your love. Father, I receive all the glory, oh Lord. Amen. All those who have contributed for the success of today's program, we beg and beseech you, Almighty Father, continue to empower them the more. Amen. Our brother, Superior Evangelist Ebenezer. Ebenezer, we pray, Almighty Father, that you will give him the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding to continue to propagate your words. So, <coughs> Amen. All these words we've had today, O Lord, may we use it for your glory, O Lord. Amen. And we say, Take all the glory, Father. Take all Amen. the glory, Son. Take Amen. all the glory, Holy Spirit. In Amen. Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Please. Uh, may the good grace of the Lord and the Father and Amen. the Holy Spirit Amen. be and rest abide with us. Amen. Amen. Now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. As we go into the world, Father, protect and guide us. Amen. Guide Amen. and guide us. Amen. Bless us also. Amen. Let the world see the reflection of you in us. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Jesus' name. I say hallelujah to praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you very much for watching. Uh, we're back again on Saturday next week. Time out with Celestia Honors TV every Saturday at 11 o'clock. God bless you.